I think Colin Baker is an underrated doctor. I mean, if you ignore the costume, which is just a sign of the 80s, and him strangling Perry, which is post generational trauma, if you look at it, he is. If you look at it like that, he, yes, he's arrogant, but in the right way, because the doctor is someone who will brag about his intelligence. And sometimes it can be overbearing, but most of the time I think it works. Yeah. And it can be quite witty, quite good. In, in Child of the Time Lord, um, when Perry is killed off, his reaction is just pitch perfect. Yeah. It's fantastic. So I've gone for Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor. And the reason I've done this, I'm sorry, it doesn't beat you putting Colin Baker <laughs> after David Tennant. I'm sorry. Oh. But yeah, the reason I've gone for Peter Capaldi is because his character of the Doctor, he just, he just didn't do it for me. He just didn't. Like, I think that, being honest, like, you know, people that aren't so good as Doctor like Sylvester McCoy, he even was a, a better Doctor than him. But I put him low because after se like Series 10, that was a good series because of Bill. Mm. It's just Clara. I hate her as a companion. I don't think she's that good. She ruined Matt Smith for me. She ruined Pete Capaldi for me. So, yeah. I disagree, but fair enough. And the writing was awful. <laughs> Number eight, William Hartnell, the first Doctor. The original, the one that started it all. And that's why he's on the list at uh, this bit, because he's the one who started it all. And if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have Doctor Who today, would we? No. And I think he's got such a good gravitas to him. I quite like the grandfather-esque vibe I get around him. Yeah. And true, he did try to kill someone in an early child, the first Doctor Who story. But when you go from that to the rest of his era, it, it's really good character development, because he develops as a character. Yeah. From this grotchety person into a more warm accepting person that is great character development I i'll put william hartnell as well because snap up i've gone from william hartnell as well because like you just said started it all he, he set a precedent for every doctor to come and i think he has a very unique style of being the doctor because it was the first ever one on tv yeah so yeah that's why he's so in the middle for me <laughs> Number seven, the seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy, funny enough. And I've gone for Patrick Troughton, the Ooh, second Doctor. So I've gone for Sylvester McCoy because in his first season, he wasn't that good, I don't think. But as it went on, he got really manipulative, quite dark, which sort of brought back the who in Doctor Who. Yeah. Sort of, you know, tricking a Dalek into committing suicide, tricking Davros into blowing up Scarrow. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I know you mentioned it wasn't very good that how he um, tricked Ace, but I don't mind that actually, mm -hmm. because it was sort of to help her. I yeah, think. I, I, I agree a little bit. So yeah, I, so I don't mind that, and I think if he was just doing it for the hell of it, then yeah, wouldn't be good. But because he was doing it for a purpose, yeah, I quite like it. So I thought for Patrick Troughton because I thought he was a good actor and he portrayed the Doctor well. It's quite difficult because he... He was like the first new Doctor. Yeah, because he went from... William Hartnell was on TV for about three years as the Doctor. Yeah. So people actually got used to him and thought, oh yeah, he's the one. But and as then, he got older, he started to get ill. Yeah. So they thought, I'll tell you what, let's bring a new character yeah. into it. And then and then people were like, who is this tramp? I want the last guy. He looks like a homeless man. <laughs> which I think is the like, essence, so I say... Of like the doctor and like yeah, his style. He introduced a lot of things, things like the sonic screwdriver. Yeah, he introduced the sonic screwdriver. Um, the worrying about a lot. Of yeah, worrying about the corridors and the, the sort of like witty, jokey, comedic side of the doctor. Yeah. And I think Matt Smith's character was actually very inspired by Patrick Troughton. Yeah, I think Matt Smith did say that Troughton was his favourite doctor. Yeah, because he had the bow ties, yeah. running about a lot, jumping about. Yeah. So very that's calm. why he's you know so high. <laughs> Number six, Chris Eccleston, the ninth Doctor. And I've gone for Peter Davidson, the fifth Doctor. Okay. Chris Eccleston, I think, obviously, he's a very good Doctor. A bit like what Ronnie what yeah. said. Um, he sort of introduced Doctor Who to a brand new audience yeah. in 2005. And that is something that needs to be commended, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree. But, yeah, I think he was a great Doctor. See, I've gone... Sort of, like, got almost like a PTSD Doctor. Could be very angry at times. Because of the time war, yeah. To the Daleks and stuff. It can also be very funny, like in the Slovenian two-parter, Rose is like, oh, my mum's cooking. And he's like, oh, put her on a slow roast. And like, yeah. That's very funny. I think he had some comedic moments. Yeah. But I'll go for Peter Davidson because I think he was very bland. and But I also liked it. I liked the way that he 
Or he was more human. It, yeah, he was more a human doctor and he carried the bit of celery because I think it is something... If, he, if, he, was allergic, gas, if yeah. he was allergic to some gas, he'd eat celery. And I thought that was like, it showed uh, the doctor's way to like keep him surviving. Um, and it showed him wearing like a human sign, like an anti, you know, because the doctor's also supposed to like never die, sort of. He mm-hmm. uh, always regenerates, so it sort of shows like more. Um, and I think his costume was a bit bland, that's why he's not very high on my list, but in other words, he's a very good doctor. <laughs>